Hello and what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B and thank you for joining me today. I feel like I'm on like a little bit of a schedule. I uploaded a video last week and the week before. Um, things are kind of, I don't know, starting to settle in. And I, I said that the last couple of weeks and every week it just settles in more and more. And I am just super grateful for that. Uh, we have a new walker in our house. Um, our 13 year old that had um, pretty major foot and ankle surgery he had both of his feet and ankles broken. I talked about that a, a little while ago. I keep, I say I'm not gonna talk about stuff like that anymore and then it just comes out. Um, anyway, he has had such a long journey over the last eight weeks and he is up and walking without boots, uh, which is such a praise and such a, just an amazing thing to see him really like take ownership of his care and um I don't know it's just it's been amazing to see the young man he is he is turning out to be um last week I uploaded a video which y'all loved and I loved that you loved it um it is my prairie schooler collection after I filmed it I realized um, maybe like later that week I realized I didn't pull out any of my kitted projects and I have several of those, so I need to, in video's future, um, remember that I have kitted projects I want to share with you as well that are also part of my collection. Um, I mentioned in that video, I know others have done this where they're sharing their collection, and this week I watched a video. I'm really far, far behind on some floss tubes um, that I really enjoy, and I hate that. Um, but I watched a Rebel Stitcher, Colleen, um, is getting ready to have her sweater weather um, retreat. And I saw that she mentioned in the video previous that she had shared some of her Prairie Schooler collection. And so I love when we're all like kind of on the same, same wavelength. So it's just, it's really fun and exciting. Um, just, I don't know, a different way to do a whip parade. And I thought, um, breaking it up into several videos and sharing like not only my whips that I have by certain designers, but, um, I don't know, charts that are in my collection and then kit up projects. So with that being said, um, if you haven't watched that video yet, it's, I don't, I don't remember. It wasn't, it wasn't too terribly long, but it was last week. And then of course we had, uh, the floss tube the week prior. And so, um, gosh, you guys are just like so warm and loving and appreciate it. I appreciate that. Um, and so I don't know. It's just, it's been amazing. Um, I have some things I'm going to do, um, my videos a little bit differently. Let me turn down the brightness of this. Maybe, um, I use a journal on, um, mm, I almost said good reads, good notes on my iPad. And Jen Lee came up with this journal it is basically all of your whips um, in a notebook. So it looks like this and she created this and I love her yearly planner. Um, I have used it for several years now. It helps me keep on track and it helps me, I don't know, just like stay focused with some of my bigger projects that I wanna make progress on when I can. But I was getting um, to where I like hated moving all my whips over every single year. And she created a specific whip notebook. So what I did is I purchased this notebook. Once you purchase it, you have the download uh, for good. And so I have created one, two, three, four, five, six, seven categories. And um, I saw Shelly Fry talk about her, I'm getting a little bit sidetracked. I saw Shelly Fry talk about her whip library and how excited she got over that antique needleworkers. And I started a whip library earlier this year, probably like closer to the spring, if not like January, February. And I did my own whip library because I was tired. Like she said, I was tired of like digging through a basket to try and find a specific project. The difference between hers and mine is one, I don't have 200 projects in it. Uh, and two, I don't keep my whips and my kits together because I do things like 12 by 12. I want to keep them separated. Um, and I don't have nearly as many kits as I do whips. I kind of tend to start things as I kit them up. Uh, it's really hard for me to like wait on things. 
So with that being said, my whip library is set up to match my whip notebooks. So I have seven categories and we'll kind of go through these um, just naturally as I show my whips, but I'll show you. So like this one is friendship. So my categories that I've broken my whips into are Christmas, fall and Thanksgiving. Now, mind you, I don't do any Halloween stitching. If I do, it's very small. Um, and it's kind of because I just started it on a whim. So I have fall and Thanksgiving, and then I have patriotic spring things that I want to hang in our home. Now, all of these are eventually either going to hang in my home or, um, be pillows in my home, things like that, but things that I want up all the time. So I just labeled it our home cause I couldn't think of anything better. Um, bee themed projects and then friendship. Um, I have a desire to, um, have a friendship wall in my house. I just think that would be so beautiful to have up like a whole wall, like these quilts, a whole wall of just like friendship themed stitches and samplers. And I've been able to join so many sales and things like that over the last several years and done sales with other people that are close to my heart. And so I want to be able to display those kind of like all together. So that is a specific category in my whip notebook. So um, if you've never used a digital notebook before, the way this works is it has tabs to the side. You probably can't read those, they're a little bit dark, but it says about, dashboard, index, and extras. So if I click to my index, it lists all the projects that I have in that category. So this one happens to be friendship. And so I have your name, which is by um, Country Rustic. I you There's a place to label when you've started it and then a, a place when you finished it. Um, Pernice Manor, After the Rain, The Friendship Sampler, Project Quarantine, Above All, Busy Hands, Kindred Spirits, Friendship Sampler, My Friend's House, Kindred Spirits, A-H-T-E-E. -E. So like all of those things. So do you see how they're numbered like that? Um, and then you might see up here, there are numbered tabs. As I'm going through my whips, I'm hoping this is going to be a good place for this. We're going to try it and see what y'all think. Um, but let's say that I want to look at, um, okay, so I want to look at Kindred Spirits, which is number eight. If I go to the top and just, and I know you guys can't see this, but I click on number eight, there's Kindred Spirits right there. I can write any information that I do on it. Um, this one is a sal that I started with Liz and Stephanie quite some time ago. And then as I flip through the pages, so I literally just flip through the pages, there is a place for all the floss that we've used. And then I love this. So as of April 30th, this is where my progress was. And so my goal is when I show you a whip, I can pull up this picture and say, here's where I was. Here's where I'm at now. And then after I film a floss tube, I can snap a picture and, and add it right here. There is space for you to write the pattern, the designer, the type of fabric you're using, stitch count. Um, whether you categorize this as a mini, a small, a medium, a large, or a BAP, which is a big project, um, and then any floss that you've used. I'll show that for you. So it gives you all this space to write this information, which is fantastic. And then as you click further, here are, is stitching tracking for this specific project. Um, there is blank space if you need to chart it out. There is a project that I'm working on also called Kindred Spirits with um, Liz Matthews. And I don't love, I, I, don't, I don't know, I'm struggling with the word um, spirits. I don't love, um, I'm looking for it and I don't see it. This is it, okay. So this is um, Teresa Kogut. Liz picked this up for me at market this year. And um, I started it just, uh, I started it actually at StitchCon when I spent time with her. So I went to um, the hotel that she was at for StitchCon A and spent the night with her. And um, 
she and I don't get in-person time very often and so that was just a sweet time for us and so I wanted to start this project when we were together just because she bought it for me and I thought it was really special. I don't believe she's stitching this but I am and so here's the piece. It's a Teresa Kogut piece and I've got it just on my on the front of my notebook here and then I put uh, it was a market gift for Liz and then as we go through here I've listed all of the information about the project, any, um, I can track my stitching. I am really bad at actually tracking the stitching time that I do, but that's okay. Okay, and then like I said, I don't love the word spirits at the bottom. So while I was at StitchCon, I actually recharted it to say hearts. Um, and this is a graph paper that gives you space to do that. And then I will hold it way, way, way back here. But here's my chart that I've scanned in. Oh, okay. Here's my chart that I've scanned in. So I can, I mean, blow it way up uh, for my eyes to see. So here, the spirits is where I will be changing that to hearts. Um, and that I was just trying to come up with words um, over and over, like in my head as I was sitting at StitchCon, at StitchCon B, stitching this. And um, someone behind me said, what about hearts? I was like, oh, I love that. So all of that to be said, um, it's a wonderful place to just kind of store all your whips. I am more of a pen and paper person. Um, I wish that I had something like this on paper, but for now I'm gonna use the digital version because I know that I like it. I know that it stores everything. And I love the feature that I can pull up pictures quickly when I'm showing you things, like when I go through my web section. <clears throat> and I can now show you like, here's where I was at last time and there's a date to it of when I took all the pictures. It's around April because that's when I did my web library. So if I go to my library, I know in the friendship section, I can pull out kindred spirits. And so um, it makes things really easy to find. So. Just some um, fun information there. We're gonna see how this works if you guys like kind of seeing where I was versus where I'm at now. So, gosh, that was kind of a mouthful. I, thank you guys for listening through that. And my hair is just gonna do what it's, it's gonna do its own thing today and we're gonna be okay with that. Um, I have a lot to show you today. I have, I've just had such a wonderful stitching week this week. Um, as some of you might know, we homeschool. And this week I just implemented a fall break. We were on fall break from our community days. And so I thought, let's do fall break at home. And I took that very seriously, did very little housework. Um, and we played a lot. Um, and I stitched a great deal, uh, a great deal for me. And so I'm really excited to share those things with you. Nothing is ironed. Uh, nothing is the way it should be, but that's okay. We're going to we're going to get through it. It's going to be great. So, um, any other things I need to tell you? Um, I'm so excited about your excitement for, I'm excited about your excitement for 12 by 12. I promise I'm working on those plans. I hope to have those out to you by the 1st of November. So you can really get two months to prepare and plan for your 12 by 12 projects. So I'm still working on something super fun. Um, okay. So this week in my floss tube endeavors, I have watched a ton of people. It just is like the floss tube stitching bug really hit me and I loved it. Like I loved having that time. It has been a while since I've had that and I just really, um, I just really took advantage of it. One of the things that, um, one of the people that I've watched that I've never watched before, I've actually never heard of this floss tube and, but I'm sure I'm in the dark on this. Um, is Lady Huzzah. So it's um, Lady and then Huzzah. Mm, I'm not going to pretend to spell it because I don't want to get it wrong and then send you down the wrong path. Um, but I started to watch her. She popped up on my like, uh, I think I watched a floss tube I know and then it popped up as like the next one. So I just let it play and she has some beautiful reproduction samplers all over her house. And oh my goodness, I just loved so much listening to her talk about reproductions. Um, I am now on the hunt for some sam um, some antique sampler 
Hmm. Sampler and antique needlework magazines. I have scoured the internet like I have. I want to like go to find all these magazines because some of the things she was pulling out were so beautiful. And I love to bring attention to, um, I love to just stitch things that other people aren't stitching. I think it's really unique. And um, I really enjoyed watching her video. I thought it was super fun just to watch like all of these antique samplers. So then that started me down like a whole rabbit hole of um, just, I don't know, needlework. And I was just searching and just loving the reproduction aspect. So then I watched a ton of different people that do reproductions and I really just feel like a shift. You know, we all feel a shift in our in our needlework and I really feel this shift coming on. It doesn't mean that I don't love the things I'm already stitching because I pretty consistently will go through my whips and pull things that I'm not really loving anymore and then keep going on things that I do love and want to spend time on. Um, so with that being said, You'll kind of see like an eclectic whip uh, parade for me today because I just kind of went with it. So I think I told you at the end of the last floss tube video, not the preschooler video, but that I was going to pull, I had pulled this out and started working on it. So I got a good bit of progress done. I am down here in this corner. This is the Houses of Hawker and Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. And I am down here in this block. And the only thing I have left to do is that block stitching. The only reason I stopped this, um, because I really like, there were several days where I just couldn't wait to wake up and stitch. Um, oh, that is such a beautiful feeling that I've not had in a while. And so I was glad to do it. Anyway, um, I stopped on this because this is now kind of like in my Zoom pile where like if I'm Zoom stitching with people, this is a great one to pull out and work on because all I have left to do is that really dark stuff at the top, just a fill in. And so I have kind of a zoom pile always going. That way I have things that I can kind of mindlessly work on. So um, I have the Houses of Hawker and Hollow and I have no fabric information. Yes, I do. This is on um, 46 Count Honey by Bee Stitch Me. I am using all the called for MPI silks. Um, and let me show you where I'm at. This piece of fabric is absolutely gorgeous. And here we go. So here's where I'm at. So just to give you, let me pull this up in my little thing here. I can very quickly do that. Let me just find it here. 21. I almost have some of these notebooks completely full. Okay, so in April, here's where I was and I have only been working on this for two weeks. These are very sloppy pictures, some of them because they're very wrinkled. So there's where I was at in April and here's where I'm at now. Gosh, I love this. I did change the color um, that was in the windows. If you saw on the picture, the windows inside were red and dye lots sometimes are very different. And so it just, I didn't, I didn't love it. There wasn't enough of a change in the color for me to, for you to clearly see that those were windows and doors. So oh, this is just so beautiful. And I think to myself, it's this big on like one block is this big on 46 count. And um, I just can't imagine. I, I can't imagine in person seeing how big these would be on, on 36 or 32 count. So fascinating. I love this so much. Um, this is one of those pieces that afterwards I just feel like I want to pet my stitches, which I know is not good for them, but super fun. So there is my Houses of Hawker and Hollow. So this is in my Zoom pile. And so um, I'm excited to, to have that to, to work on as I'm visiting with friends. Okay, the next one that I have is, um, so after my Prairie Schooler video, I talked about how my collection of Prairie Schooler Santas, I would love to see one done on a 56 count. I just thought that would be really fun and I just got really excited. And so I had a new start 
Um, I pulled, I just started from the very beginning. This is 1984, excuse me. Yes, 1984 Santa. And I pulled my 5363 count that um, Holly and I picked up at Craft Gallery when we visited there in June. And let me show you the tiniest Santa in all the land. He is so cute. This is 5363 count. The color is Cypress. Um, and I cannot remember who made this fabric. I cannot remember off the top of my head, but here it is. Look at this Santa. I mean, are you kidding me? He is the cutest, most dense little Santa. I will say I do not love my white stitches on this 5363 count. And um, I know I will have a couple of questions. 5363 count is an uneven weave. So sometimes you will have super tiny X's and sometimes you will have a little bit bigger ones. They're all little, right? But um, I'm trying, I won't be able to show you close enough on camera where you would be able to see it. But some of the threads going through the fabric are very, very thin. And so you have to pay attention to where your needle lies. And so with that being said, um, it just, oh, I just love him. He's so, so cute. I have an idea for him that I'll share with you in my haul, but gosh, I love him. Okay. So that is on a 5363 count. I'm just using the call for DMCs. Someone at StitchCon, and I'm so sorry, maybe it was a petite retreat. Someone has given me this beautiful DMC floss drop. So what I decided to do is, and I'll talk about these floss drops here in a few minutes, but what I decided to do is just keep these DMCs as my Prairie Schooler collection. As I get more of them, if they call for different threads and I'll just attach them, then I just always have Prairie Schooler ones here. So I don't have a progress picture ahead of time because this was a new start for me. So super, super cute. I love him. Now I kind of want to make one like in 46 count in true 56 count. Like I kind of just, uh, just so I can see the differences. Uh, the next whip I have is a, I told you, like I kind of went down this reproduction rabbit hole. Um, this is a 12 by 12 start from this past year. Let me see if I can find where I was ahead of time. This is Alice Williams, 1881. So this was a 12 by 12, 12 by 12 start from this past year. This is Alice Williams by Hands Across the Sea. Beautiful. If you notice, this is quite fussy. Every single letter is a different color. Um, but I loved this. Idleness is the thief of time. I just thought that was... I wish I could make that into a phone case. Idleness is the thief of time. And so I pulled this out because I was really just craving working on a, um, working on a reproduction. With that being said, I do not even have this out of the hoop. Let me pull it for you. So I took a couple of days to start working on this. Let me show you where my progress was before this. This is Alice Williams. This is my progress um, before I started this week on this. Just super tiny. That is like a pretty typical 12 by 12 start. Um, it's just less than 50 stitches, which as we all know, uh, 50 stitches to help the new start make. So here we are. I mean, this is the fussiest of pieces, but I love it. I did my own color conversion here and I'm really, really enjoying it. I will show it to you here in a few minutes, but I am also, I'm using the way, the reason it looks like this, I'm using my favorite hoop. Um, the only thing that would make this hoop better is if it were the wider version. I don't even know if they, if Hardwick makes a wider um, hoop in the oval, but I would be all over it if they did. I love this. So I kind of worked in like this half and now I'll move the hoop and work in the other half. 
but here I am for that. Gosh, I love these colors so much, so much. So I just did a color conversion and honestly, I did not put too terribly much thought into it. All I did when I was kidding for 12 by 12, I picked a handful of colors that I really enjoyed. To be, to be perfectly clear with you, let me pet my floss for a second because they are looking a little rough. Um, to be completely honest with you, I just pulled a bunch of colors that I really enjoyed and threw them in this bag because there, there doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason as to where the colors are placed. Obviously, I'll show you. Obviously, the borders are um, detailed. This border is actually uh, two different colors. There are two chevrons stacked on top of each other. Um, what I did differently, I pulled out this whole section and I did not do that chevron. I just wanted this top section here, so that's how I modified the pattern. I'm so excited to get back to this and actually get it finished up. I don't know, I just had a bug to get some finishes in, so um, eventually that will happen. And random threads. We, we wouldn't be stitchers if we didn't have random threads, right? Okay, let me put all that back together. And then I had another new start that I will share with you. It was our sweet Tammy Totten's birthday uh, this past week. And um, when we were all together at Craft Gallery, she had picked a new start and um, just a pattern that she loved. This is Love Always from Annie B's. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, I showed you this as a haul a few weeks ago because I picked up all the threads for it. And I talked about how that front cover is not at all uh, what the colors are like. And so we started this together. We were going to start it together on a Zoom Thursday evening, but there, um, most of them are all together at a retreat. And you know how retreats go. Like you have the best of intentions to stop and do something, but it's a retreat and that just doesn't happen. So let me put something behind this so you can see it because that light pink around the house is quite light. So here's where I'm at on that. Now, you might notice um, that I have done a little modifying. So what I did is I didn't necessarily want the cat in this. Cats don't necessarily strike me as a Tammy Totten sort of thing. So let me pull this out of the plastic. And I don't have a progress picture on this because it's a new start. Okay, so we see this cat here in the bottom and I loved this. I loved the little basket that it's in. So what I did is I pulled out this whole section. I mirrored this tree over here and instead of an urn, I put it in that basket. So I'll have two tall trees on either side of that house in those baskets instead of that urn. I love this. It is coming together quite quickly. I've gotten all the fussiness of that house seal, that fussiness inside there. I've gotten all the fussiness of the house done um, so now I can just do fill in. So this actually will probably go in my zoom pile as well. If I don't work on it normally today. Um, and as I am looking at this, there's actually a little bit of a difference. So girls, if you're watching, pay attention, um, on the chart, it calls for inside the windows to be brown, which I thought was a little bit interesting. And, um, on the picture, it shows that it's gray. So Pay attention to whichever you like best um, for that. So that's where I'm at on that. Doing all the called for flosses and everything. Um, in fact, they're all downstairs by my stitching chair because I was working on this uh, up until last night. So I've got some fill in to do there, which is fun. And then continue up into that love always. Okay, I have some, I have a finish, which it has been a while since I've had a finish that's not a model. And so this is super little, super tiny. So like, don't get super excited for me. But um, this is a 12 by 12 start that I started in 2022. So it would have been this last year. And let me see exactly. Okay, it is in our home. Um, here is the start that I had, I had the tiny, let me get back to it, the tiniest of starts. 
I would have thought two, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches as a 12 by 12 start. Um, so there I am. Here's what it's going to look like. And I have a very specific purpose for this. Um, and I will tell you what it is. Uh, but here first is my finish. Very little. But it's so cute. I love it so much. This is on 46 count B Stitch Me in Coconut Shell. And it is just with DMC Black. So this is Kind Words. And I have a very specific finish. Um, you might see right there is a Not Forgotten Stitching Tray. But over that direction right there is my Elan Lap Stand. And I love to take my Elan Lap Stand to uh, retreats. Because so often... You're sitting in the same chair for several hours a day for multiple days in a row and your shoulders can hurt if you don't have great posture and I do not have great posture. So I like to sit my lawn stand on the table in front of me. I was actually just explaining this uh, the other day to someone. I will set my lawn stand uh, in front of me, but I will drop, I will sit back in my chair and I will drop that arm all the way back and stitch closer to me. So I'm sitting back in my chair with my shoulders open, uh, my chest open, and then I'm stitching that direction. I have one of those pattern clips um, that clip onto like my hoop or something like that. It will actually clip onto that Elan stand with no issue. I need though, because of the direction I'm pulling that arm of the Elan stand, I need a weight that goes on the base so that it's not tipping forward. So with that being said, I thought, my goodness, how cute would it be to turn this into a weight? Um, I don't go to many stitching retreats. I go to um, this coming year, I'm only going to stitch away. And then um, we'll go, I'll go on one other trip in June. But um, how cute would this be as a weight for my lawn stitching stand and what better reminder to have kind words during a retreat than just having a little weight there so I need to think if you have some suggestions on what I could fill this with that would give enough weight and bulk so I have this this was gifted to me by um Mary from she is a keepsakes customer but she also works Mary Bloom also works like the StitchCon Annex and things like that. She's wonderful. The very first StitchCon I went to in 2019, she gifted me this and it has some good weight to it. I think it needs to be maybe a little bit heavier. This feels like maybe crushed walnut shells or something. Maybe it needs to be a little bit heavier than that. Maybe I can mix a few fillers to get that weight in it. But this is sort of like what I need, but this is long and skinny and I think we'll distribute the weight even better. Oops, that's like him. But I could add fabric to the top and bottom and kind of make it a little bit heftier if I need to. So that was a fun finish for me. I really enjoyed this. It was very quick. Uh, in fact, right after I kind of went down that uh, reproduction rabbit hole, I came upstairs to my whip library and I was like, what can I finish immediately that's sampler-esque that I could just get some good progress on? So that is, those are the two I pulled, the um, Alice Williams and then the Not Forgotten Farm kind words. I just thought that was really cute. Okay, so um, very exciting. Okay, so now after I'm done, the idea is that I'll take pictures of where I'm at in my whips, upload them, not upload them. You can actually take pictures in this app and then I'll just stack it right on top of these. So next time we can blow it up and I can show you where I'm at from that. So I really enjoy this app a lot. It, um, this this notebook a lot it is um Jen Lee is quirks and stitches and she's the one who created this and she is also the um the gal that does 24 hours of cross stitch she just her brain I want to live inside of it sometimes for her organizational ideas and um she just has some really good ones so okay let's talk about haul this week we had a um one appointment up at our children's hospital. And so we, on our way back down, we, um, I asked tech guy because I wanted to start that preschool school or Santa. I said, can you just stop at Joanne's? I'll run in and grab some DMC. I need like seven colors and then I'll pop right back out. Not, not a big deal. And he said, I, I knew you were lying right when you said I'll pop right back out. 
So I I did my very best to just kind of beeline for the, the back of the store to get the DMC. And here's why. I am severely allergic to cinnamon, like severely allergic. I shouldn't even be going in stores like Joann's and Hobby Lobby during the fall season because my throat closes, like it's a whole ordeal. But I thought if I just go really quickly and don't have too much exposure, it will be fine. Um, and so I thought I'm just gonna beeline. Well, as, as I'm beelining, like really trying to have blinders on, I was looking for floss tags and I'll show you those. I was like, oh, those are in the cross or the uh, scrapbook section. I know exactly where they're at. I'll just grab those really quickly. What I like to do is buy these. They're just Park Lane gift tags. They just look like this. This is a 30 pack. I usually like the smaller ones, but they didn't have them. So these are like the two and a half inch ones. Um, they're three inches because it says on the back. So these were on sale for a dollar. So I picked up a ton of those. And what I do is I just bring them home and poke two holes in them. One is my working thread and one is the rest of my floss. So I just like to have those on, on my radar ready to go. So I picked those up. As I was coming out of that aisle, end caps full of picture frames that were on clearance. And I was like, oh no, I do need a few frames because I am bound determined to have some fully finishes. I have a drawer full of finishes that I've never done anything with. I need to do something with these. So that being said, I picked up some frames. I first saw this one and you can maybe tell a little bit there, but this is like a gray and blue. Look, yeah, there you go. You can kind of see that. I picked this up for $7. I, it's a good thick frame. And I thought just for framing some things that are not heirloom pieces, this is gonna be great. So I picked this one up for seven bucks. And they had a coupon. Um, if you spent so much money, you got so much off. I think this time it was if you spend 50, you got 15 off. Then I found this one, which was kind of like a little bit rustic-y black, which I just thought was really pretty. I was buying light frames and then realized my light fabric and a light frame, I did not like it. So then I was distressing frames. It was like a whole, it was a whole thing. So I, I started buying, I bought some darker frames. So love that. Okay. And then this little one. Um, to be honest, I've seen some of the Dollar Tree that have this like mm, textured wood um, that are like the bigger size, but I thought this was pretty. This one was $6. So I'm really, okay. So then the next end cap had tiny frames. And because I love tiny fabric with tiny little holes and tiny little stitches, and these were on sale for $1.99, I picked up a ton of them. So these are all like two and a half by three and a half picture size, like super little. Look at the texture of that frame. Oh, so good. Some of them I got in pairs. So this one is three and a half square. Look at that rope detailing. There's this one. I also was telling someone that I thought it would be a really great idea to have a hodgepodge of these frames as place settings for a Christmas table. Wouldn't that be adorable? Okay, then this little guy. This is actually navy blue. There you go. I think you can see it. Navy blue. Adorable. For like smalls exchanges, I already showed you that one. Okay, these are super cute. These were $1.99, you guys. And this is an easel, so it would sit flat on your table like that. How cute would these be as a place setting? But I'm gonna put tiny little cross stitch in them. So I got two of those because I really liked those. This one, I don't necessarily love the color, but I loved the ornateness of this. I don't necessarily love the flowers. Anyway, I like the whole picture of it. That was super cute. This one was adorable. I mean, I just had an armful. Okay, then this one I got specifically for my tiny little prairie schooler. I do not know if he's gonna fit in there. I think he might, let's just test it, you guys. Let's just see. Um, I think he's gonna be super close. 
Oh, let me move the tag. Let me move the tag. There we go. He might, I think he might be super close to fitting in there. I'm not. Oh, I don't know. And this fabric's way too big to like try and fold it down. But he's just a green one. I thought he would be cute with a little Santa or something in it just sitting around. So, okay. So that's my Joanne's framing haul. Don't sleep on Joanne's frames. Listen, I we should absolutely support our small business owners. Um, like the framers. Their work is amazing. In fact, I have a piece of the framers right now. I'm waiting on um, the specific frame that I wanted was out of stock. So then I had to choose a different one. So anyway, I'm very excited for this piece to come back. Um, but things that I know I'm not going to keep forever, my children are not going to care a lick about. I don't mind to throw in a frame. And so um, heirloom pieces, things that like you care about and that's wrong. We all care about all of our stitching, but things that we think our family is going to carry about, care about long after you're gone, have them professionally framed. Um, my kids probably aren't going to care about a prairie school or Santa, as sad as that is. Okay. Um, and then I just have my normal haul. So this is this week's or this month's um, Be Stitch Me. This is called Boneyard. It is a green. Um and it is 46 count because that's what I get. And then here's the flosses for this month. So this is September's. Super pretty. And then this is the 40 count that I get from Color and Cotton. This is really pretty. The only reason I don't open the Big Stitch Me one is because it's that really loud crinkly stuff. Um, this is called Overcast. And it is a great, there we go. It is a gray tone. It's really pretty. So, okay, friends, that is all I have for you today, I believe. I have so much rubbish sitting all around me, but I think that is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for joining me in the hive. And thank you for just letting me blah all over that. Oh, I guess haul. I did forget. I did get a Floss Boston Cousins shirt. And it came this week. Don't be a heifer. Um, I giggle so much when I watch those girls. Um, gosh, they're just, they're really fun girls. Christy and I have talked a little bit outside of Floss Tube and just really enjoyed each other's company. Uh, we're, we're each other's clingy friends. Um, and so it's just been really fun to get to know her better a little bit. And um, I don't know, it's just, it's a really fun channel to watch. So if you have not watched... Floss Boss and Cousin, I, I, everybody is talking about them, so I'm sure you have, but um, stop over there and, and give them uh, a watch. So, okay, I think that's all I have for you. I have a busy day. I have some exciting things today, and I cannot wait to get back to stitching. So, hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you next week.